The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Start a new career as an estate agent. Call 0141-374-0409. Good evening. The transfer window closes 11.30 in Scotland tomorrow night, but not too much on the go today. There's plenty on the go, but no results so far. At Celtic, the news this morning was Adam Ida, a striker at Norwich City, not been playing much, but he could be on his way to the champions. At Rangers, he's been in town for a couple of days. Is he signing? He is, I think. Oscar Cortes, poised to be unveiled any time now as a new Rangers player. Well, with us, the former Rangers captain, Barry Ferguson, former Celtic star, Peter Grant, and will be joined shortly by Motherwell celebrity supporter, Stephen Reside. On the day when Aberdeen part company with Barry Robson, just over a year ago, he took over from Jim Goodwin, took them to third top last season, took them to the cup final just last month. He's out of his job after a bad run. Have they given him enough time? What do you think? You know the number, 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Peter, first of all, good evening. Good evening, Paul. What do you think? What is the news? We woke up today to hear about this young Norwich City player. We don't know much about him. I've seen him play for Norwich, um, not that often. Like everybody else, you can yeah. see stats. It's easy yeah. enough to do nowadays. But I'm always loathed a little bit because you look at statistics and you look at the goals, but then you put the minutes in there as well how many games has he played the full 90 minutes championships a bit unforgiving for centre forwards and Norwich have not been playing particularly well so all these things for a striker is not great so that's the, the, the negative side of it and for the young lad what I've seen of him is he the finished article far from it um, and I think it's it's a surprising one and I don't mean that disrespectfully to the kid or whatever because I've always said it I've played at Norwich I managed Norwich a fantastic club Celtic is something different yeah. you know mm. Celtic is something different and there's no getting away from that and it, it, the surprising thing has been jumping round about the press more than anything else you weren't going for Danny like Danny Ings yeah. and it's Adam Ida I know the Republic Island connection he's been playing more for them probably than Norwich recently you know he's a powerful young lad you know I've seen him at the start he scored a few goals always got into good positions but um, like any young striker his, his stats weren't that high in the goals but in saying that I worked with Moussa Dembele at, yeah. and would I have recommended Moussa as a Celtic striker? The probably answer would have been no because statistically yeah. Moussa, as I said, needed one in six and Celtic strikers and Rangers strikers predominantly, you need four in six up here. But it's ironic when Moussa left, Moussa had one in five. And yet so the Celtic was, fans, fans absolutely loved adored him. him. You know, he was so, him. Is he better than O, would you say? I would say he was ahead of him at this moment. Okay. That's me yeah. personally because okay. he's playing with the national team. Obviously, the biggest problem O's got at this moment in time. Kyogo's playing in front of him here, yeah. and Brendan mm. sees him as the one in front of him. So I think O with games, and I'm like a, I'm like everyone else. Any time I've seen O when he's played at his best, gets the minutes on the pitch, he's a handful. Mm. People don't like playing against him. I spoke to guys that's played against him and say, I think he's hard to play against. Him, whatever, he misses a few chances, but. As I say, at this moment in time, I would say it was ahead. That's only what I've seen of young boy Adam, which is not a lot. And the other news today is that um, Rio Hatati went off injured in the Japan game with Bahrain. So he went off after 36 minutes, waiting to hear what the situation is there. And Lagabielka, who looked to be in his way out, are they worried about Cameron Carter-Vickers after coming off early at the weekend that they might need cover? Celtic fans, what do you think? Call Peter Grant and Barry Ferguson now. Barry, over at Rangers, Matondo could be in his way out on, on loan? Yeah, I've seen that. Um... I would probably think that won't be the, the, the case. Um, listen, Philip Clement's gave him a, a, a few chances and I think he's done pretty well, if I'm being honest with you. Um, but I know they're trying to sign Oscar Cortez from Lens, a young 20-year-old. He's not played a lot of football this year. So it might be one out and one in. We just need to wait and see. But for me, Rabbi Matondo has shown in the last few weeks what, what he can certainly do. Um, he's got the thing that defenders hate and that's genuine pace, yeah. it hurts defenders um, but listen, Rangers are still going to be busy Paul, I said it on Monday I still think they'll look to bring in another couple of players they've already brought two players in and the manager's desperate I know he, he strengthen the squad Is one of the players, Lauren Shankland could he be coming <laughs> and could, I know. <laughs> well, could Van Veen we'll come to Stephen Shirley, could be 
on his way. He wants to come back to Scotland. Could he go to? Yeah, I've seen, I, I I seen that Van Veen might be available. Um, that could be the case, that he could be going to Hearts or Shankland could be going to Rangers. We just need to wait and see. But you know my, my personal opinion on Lon Shankland. I really like him. I think he's improved so much over the last 12 months. And I think he would fit well into this Rangers team. Has he fitted into the new Blazer yet? Do we know? I know you don't know yet. <laughs> uh, but just so many people are on the socials at Go Football Show and they're calling in as well. There's quite a lot on the go, but just there, there isn't this outstanding signing at Celtic that people expected something was going to happen. What about the left-back position as well? Greg Taylor injured for a few weeks. Who is going to come in there? Is Bernabe? Is he going to stay now? And it looked as though he was going to go. Matondo we mentioned at Rangers a moment or two ago. And for Celtic, there could be some money coming in. 300 grand maybe. Um, should Sunderland be successful in the bid for Leo Helder, who was here a couple of years ago? And what about... Jack Butland, we were talking about him on Monday, about international honours, will he be back in for England? And I see Forrest win for him last night, but Rangers have said he's going nowhere. Yeah, and I think the Rangers fans will be absolutely yeah. delighted um, that Rangers have, have said that. Listen, everybody's got a price in their head, Paul. If somebody comes in with an absolute crazy offer, I'm sure they would have to look at it, but I think Jack Butland has come in the first half of the season and, and shown that he's a top-class goalkeeper. Listen, he had big gloves to fill with Alan McGregor retiring. Um, my only concern when, when Rangers were, were signing Jack Butlin was he hadn't played a lot of football over the last couple of years but listen he certainly had the ground running and he, he's pulled off some excellent saves so I'm sure the manager will be absolutely desperate um, to keep him at the club 08, 08, 17, 17, 700 Rangers the scores are this they've got Diamondi in they've got Silva Oscar Cortez signing any moment now we believe Lammers is uh, out Jefty, where's he? Is he coming He's in as well? He has. Where, is he in the blue room? Is he there? No. Come on, is he coming out? They're going to bring him out. I don't know. Listen, yeah. that, that's um, I seen it yesterday in the press that he, he's went missing the last four or five days. So he maybe pop out somewhere tomorrow morning and. Yeah. And a, and a Rangers strip we just need to wait and see in that one and Sifuente is on his way to yeah. Cruzeiro so he yeah. will be leaving yeah, what happened listen, there, was, yeah. th there was a big noise when he yeah. came in I just don't think this brandy football or Scottish football suits right. Sifuente yeah. listen I do think he's a good player Paul I think he's got good attributes but he's just not settled in and maybe going elsewhere um, on loan to get games under his belt would be the best thing for him Jota is not going to West Ham. Peter, your old club, is he? It seems to be a complicated tax situation because he's gone to yeah. Saudi. Well, that's the biggest problem, yeah. Paul. He said at the start you had to go for two years so you're tax-free money. That's what, Everybody was well aware of that or you weren't earning. So, But I think Jota looks like a kid that would like to be playing football. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to see that if this manager went in and put him into his league squad, that's important because he was born from that and he was only allowed to play in the, the, the cup. But then when I seen Ben Arama or whatever you call him mm -hmm. at West Ham moving to Leon, I thought then there was a possibility that happening again. You know what I mean? Because the likes of that's for the sort of position that Jota would play. You know. So listen, David seen him enough at Celtic. Obviously watches that Celtic closely in the respect of that, and he knows how much he'd be able to do with his team. And listen, he's been a big loss to Celtic in the respect of that. just his character. You know, his character was excellent for Celtic. He's been over there. He's had to deal with a lot early. So I'd be delighted if he's shown everybody that he's good enough to play. Now there is absolutely no doubt in my mind when I've watched his team, he is good enough to play. A really talented young player. He's now just 17 that we spoke about a few months ago. We heard about him. It's the Queen's Park goalkeeper, Callan McKenna. There are three bids in for him from the English Premier League. Now, Barry, you've got to be some keeper to have three English Premier League clubs in for him. Yeah, there's been a lot of noise about the, yeah. the young man um, saying that he's got all the attributes to become a, a, a top goalkeeper. Um, and when you show that promise, they're, they're lurking about down in down in England, the, the, the big team. So I'm not surprised to hear that there's three clubs interested in the young the young man. And, and listen, it may be great for his development going down to a Premiership team, um, training with top class goalkeepers. Uh, hopefully, bring his game on. But there, there has been a lot made of of this young man. We, we heard that a year or so ago mm -hmm. that Queens Park have got a a proper young goalkeeper in their hands and. It looks, it looks if he's, he's going to be on his way. And, and if he does, listen, it's just about settling down and working hard and hopefully we hear his name in the coming years. No, I remember young Peter, when he was at yeah. Queen's Park, played along with him as a kid. Son, he was only a yeah. kid, he was through. And he said, this young goalkeeper looks excellent, Dad. He's got very good feet. I said, what about his hands? Because <laughs> he still has a goalkeeper, you've yeah. got to have good hands. Yeah. You know, 
I know the modern day game you've got to be able to pass the ball, but and Anna is one of the best <laughs> passers you'll see. Yeah. He's got a hell of a lot of criticism for yeah. not keeping the ball out the net. So as a young man, he's got a lot of learning to do. And I think if he's got the way the, the modern day games move with the, the, the playing with their feet, if he's got that and he can go and get under a top quality coach in the respect of that and what really, really hard because there's no doubt whatever team he goes to, he'll not be the number one. So he'll have a lot of time to progress. We, his main job is keeping the ball out the net along with the qualities he has with the ball at his feet. It was Hunter and Hockey. It was the hockey uh, half of that duo who told us about him a few months ago. Remember Barry? Peter, on the show, yeah. he came in and said, look out for this young yeah, keeper. Yeah, that was the so, Yep, yep. Well, and was right. what you do, in. you keep yep. an eye out, and there's been a, a, a few murmurs in the press course, that, yep. that there's been a lot of interest in mm. him. Um, and listen, as I said, when the big clubs down south come looking, that, that's where the money is. And listen, as I said, I hope he goes, if he does decide to go there, hopefully he goes down there and, and rips it up. To be fair, young yep. Callum Ferry at Queen's Park, yeah. I know they've not had the greatest mm-hmm. this season. He's done really well. He's not the biggest and probably that's the biggest thing people look at. He doesn't fill the goal in that respect, but yeah. when I've seen him play, he's done exceptionally well also. Good point. Livy, needed a win last night. They didn't get it. A draw 2-2 with Ross County. It's, it's not over for them yet, but it's looking pretty grim. Uh, and for Aberdeen, they needed a win last night against Dundee, but it ended up 1-1. Uh, what do we reckon? Who's going to be the new manager? Peter, is it, have they pulled the trigger too soon, or do you think it, it's right? It's really difficult, Paul, because... I have sympathy very much with Barry in the respect of that. He's a big Aberdeen supporter. I know his character. You know, I worked with him a couple of months under Tony. And a fantastic character, great desire to do well and progress. And there's no doubt he would have wanted Aberdeen to be a fantastic success. You see the job he done last season. Mm-hmm. But trying to do it in both fronts this season has found it very difficult. And that's the problem. It's probably the distance between them and Hearts. Yeah. The points. I know that they've got three games in hand. Yeah. Did you know, Europe take the stuffing out of them, do you yeah, think? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Listen, it's very, very difficult. You know, when you're not... You're going you're gonna to Europe, and then you're coming back, you're either playing in the Sunday catch-up again. you got a couple of injuries to big players. I watched the, the game last night, and they missed important opportunities. Yeah. You know, mm. Shinny missed one early, so, you know, and you're yeah. thinking, there's big chances yeah. in the game. Mm. And that's the fine line. Duke didn't, has not played, obviously, yeah, yeah. anywhere near mm. the capabilities that him and um, he obviously had last season, so that pairing as well. He could be off to the Spanish well, second well, division. That's what I'm saying. So you need all yeah. your players to be playing well. You can be sure. the best manager in the role, but you need your top players to be performing as well. And for such a big side, I've never seen a team struggle so, so sure. poorly at set plays. And you see it last night, that's what cost them. Big yeah. Ashcroft, very, very good, yeah. at, uh, and the delivery was good. But they've got such a big side, you've got to go and heather it. And they looked weak on that, and that's a thing that would be disappointing for Barry because I think his team was built around that back three being big and strong yep. and powerful, mm-hmm. knowing that you've got goal scorers up front. And Barry, you go back to the weekend, remember they went one up against Hearts, Mayofsky, brilliant goal, and then VAR said no. They'd yeah, just a, a lot's going against Aberdeen yeah. at this moment in time, but he's only two points off the top six. I, I think yeah. Aberdeen need to have a look at themselves, mm. I've, I've been honest with you. Since Derek McInnes has left, they've had three managers, Stephen Glass, Jim Goodwin, now Barry Robson. And how long have they had? No, even a, a year right. in, in the job. Yeah. Um, Barry had a, an experienced sidekick at the side of him, Steve Agnew, who, who knows the game inside out. I think you should have given him a bit more time. I haven't been honest with you, but I, I think Aberdeen have, have not replaced Derek McInnes. Um, and, and I would imagine these managers that I've just mentioned I would have signed two, three, four year contracts and there would be a lot of payoffs in that. So there's course, a lot yeah. of wasted money, but I, I think they need to get themselves together and make sure they get a manager. And when you get through a sticky patch, stick with them. He took them to a cup final. He, he, he did in last month. Grant, he said he had a good season last yeah. year. Listen, it's been an up and down. There's no doubt with the budget Aberdeen have got. They should be up pushing Hearts for third place. Would you say they've got the third biggest budget at Hearts probably? Just to edge that? I, I think it would be very close. Yeah. I, I think two of them are, are, are obviously behind Rangers and Celtic. So I, I think it would be... That's probably, be much that's probably when you're looking at it now when you see them in eighth. Mm-hmm. That's probably the biggest yeah. thing. Yeah. The chairman, that's the only thing I can look at because I can understand nobody will be working any harder. You know, and you just need that. But listen, I've been there myself. Mm-hmm. I know what it's like. It doesn't matter how hard you're working. Sure. The ball's not going for you. The ball drops in the box. Yeah. It goes into your net. The fans don't give you much I time just now either. I say that, no. Paul. I think yeah. board listen to fans. They're obviously at the game. They're not happy with obviously the, the recent results. And unfortunately, it's a manager who suffers the consequences. Have you seen some of these job? guys with the flags? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's, it's a about disgrace. 14 years of age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
That's the problem. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that there's somebody, the work that's going on. Is there improvement? Fine, I've got an mm -hmm. argument then, say if, there's, if we're regressing and you're getting worse and worse and worse, then I can understand that. But if you're trying to build something that takes a little bit of time, you're trying to put a new team together, mm -hmm. you can't be listening to 14 year old kids standing at the side, sure. you know, with placards and that up. Because if you start doing that, you'd be changing all the time. We've got a top fan with us, Stephen Reside. You're not uh, 18 anymore, Stephen. <laughs> uh, what do you, but you see so many games. Big Motherwell fan. Uh, what do you feel for Barry Robson and the, the Aberdeen change? I think when you look at it, he's won six games out of 21 this season. I think two of them are against the bottom two clubs. and I can, I can understand why Aberdeen fans won't change. It, it's the nature of football these days. You don't get long anywhere, I don't think. Um, whether it's right or wrong, we could sit here and argue that all sure. day. But I, I do think Barry's got a point in the sense that the next appointment that Aberdeen bring in, it needs to be one that they give a chance, it needs to be continuity. I, I would go and get someone like a Stephen Robinson who has proven that he can do it in this league for long spells at Motherwell and now again at St Mirren. I think it would be, be an ideal appointment for them. Barry, what do you make of that, Stephen Robinson? Yeah, I think he's done yeah. a, a really good job at, at St. Man, there's no doubt about that. Getting him in the top six last year was a brilliant achievement. I think he's maybe looking and thinking, well, the last St. Man may have managed to <laughs> not be Aberdeen yeah. and, and but, lost his job. Yeah. He, he's, he, I think the board are back, well, trying to back him. There's not a lot of money at St. Man, but they're, they're trying their best. And when you watch St. Man, they're very well drilled and set up. And I think if Aberdeen calling, of course it would be more salary for him, but... I think he's at a, a place where he feels comfy and he feels wanted. Peter? Is that not the chief been? executive at work with him? At, at Model. Yep. Alan Burroughs. Yep. Burroughs yep. worked with him there. Yep. You know, but did you not sack him? Yeah. 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 Well, he, I he think away. No, what yeah. happened was that Robinson walked away. Burroughs was actually trying to get him to stay. Yes. Alan Burroughs isn't one for yeah, I know that. the trigger no, very no, early. Exactly. There, has been, there has been pressure going on Barry for quite yeah. some time. Mm -hmm. I just wonder, would they go back in and try and get Derek McInnes back? I don't think Derek would go back. You know, I can go know, back, no. 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 Uh, it's a good shout, though. Yeah. I think Why? he's building something really okay. good at Kilmarnock. Yeah. I, I think if you see them getting promoted out of the Championship, I think last year was make sure we stay in the Premier, Premiership. He's added to the squad again. I think they've got better again this season. I think Kilmarnock will be in the top six. Well, I think what Barry said there, you've got to remember, there's a completely different pressure with Aberdeen than there is with St Mirren, than there is with Motherwell. And I'm not being disrespectful or anything like that because... You have to be the number three at this moment in time for Aberdeen. Yeah. Nothing else is good enough you know, for the supporters because, unfortunately, you look at the English Premiership's the exact same. The top pairs, the top people that spend the money, that's probably the top six. And it is the top six, the ones that are at the bottom, mm -hmm. apart from probably Everton, and I know they've got the 10-point deduction. Yeah. That's the way you see it. So if Stephen jumps for St Mirren to Aberdeen and doesn't go off to a great start, whatever, you've six, seven months at it, it's not been great, all of a sudden... Bang, does that get pulled again? Because Bar Barry was the opposite. He'd done fantastically well, caught hearts, qualified for Europe, done magnificently well in that respect. Yeah. Getting to this season, it's not went swimmingly, and all of a sudden the okay. trigger's pulled yeah. on you. And that's, I know that's football, but if you're going to get in, people, I believe the clubs have got to stand for them now and say, listen, we see the improvement. If they don't, fine, I can mm. understand certain parts, but, but what is don't. the improvement? You, yeah. yeah. What is it? Okay. You know, we've got yep. to Europe, we've caught all the points up, let's give them a chance to see if we can go out of this. How long we can go, they're not going to get relegated, that's for sure. sure. So they can, can they build on it and then become a club again that's going to be challenged, excuse me, because that's what they're wanting to be doing as a top two. And what's happening to Majofsky as well? Is he on the way to your old club, Peter? Doesn't sound like it. It's been really quiet. We hear about the Norwich player. What do you think, Celtic fans? Rangers fans, what do you reckon? You feel, I think, as though it's been a decent window, but you still need to hear Barry saying maybe one or two more to come in in the next, whatever it is, 27, 28 hours. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Stephen, we're going to talk about your club as well. Motherwell, could it be Kevin Van Veen? Could he be coming back there? Uh, you'd like him back, yep. stating the obvious. <laughs> is it what, Gronigan, what are they going to be? What's the latest today? The, the latest is that they're willing to listen to offers. The only issue is Motherwell currently in the position where they're asking they list celebrities for cash. So who'd be the way to the <laughs> cash to go yeah. and spend on? Good luck with Kevin that one. Van yeah. 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 Uh, listen, Stephen Paul's yeah. just down the road for Motherwell. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> He's a celebrity. <laughs> Ask him for the money. <laughs> The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go! It's the Go Radio Football Show. It's Wednesday evening, 31st of January. January's just about come and gone. The transfer 
window though closes tomorrow. I'm not quite sure, Barry, why they do it the following day. Keeps it going, doesn't it? It used to be, boom, on the 31st, but it's tomorrow evening. Yeah, but I, I yeah. think it's going to be a busy tomorrow, yeah. if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be a few signings made by, not just Rangers and Celtic, but I think a few clubs in the Scottish Premiership. Any word? We're in Lawrence Shanklin watch to see if he... Could he be going to Celtic? I'm backing up the wrong tree with that one, do you think, Peter? What do you reckon? What oh, do you, think? You, you never know when you're talking about top quality players. There's more than one club going to be interested, that, that's for sure. Could he do a job for Celtic? There's absolutely no doubt. He can score goals, and we said that before. If you've got a goal scorer, you've always got an opportunity. You have to create the chances, don't get me wrong. But you've seen, even his goal last week, you know, the wee ricochet backed him, the way he finished, it was magnificent. And I, I think Barry said it, but in the last 18 months, I think his all-round game has improved. But the most important thing is not taking himself into an area of the pitch that he can't score goals. He keeps getting into the box to put the ball in the back of the net and that's the makings of a very good striker. And as I say, Celtic or Rangers will be more than happy with winning their team. It's going to be vital though, isn't it? Whoever they sign could be, you know, whoever, the, the collection of players they get now, those are the players that are going to take you all the way to the line, Barry. Yeah, in the, in the next three um, or three and a half months, that, that's when it gets to the nitty gritty. That's yeah. business time. Um, so the signings that they make over the next 24 hours, I think could be crucial in this title um, race. And Peter, at Celtic, Liam's been on asking, what did you make? We didn't see much of him at the weekend. Nicholas Kuhn in from Rapid Vienna. Yeah, he was sharp. You know, he played. He came on and played on the left-hand side to start with, then moved over to the right-hand side. He was sharp. But as I say, it wasn't that type of game for him to really affect that much. You know, so it was very difficult. I wouldn't judge him on that. But, you know, as you say, Celtic have got wide players. And that's why, as I say, I just feel as if the ball still got to get in the box a little bit quicker when they get the opportunity. And to be fair, a badder, his final ball's not the greatest at times, but the one thing he did on Saturday when he got there, he was putting balls across early, and it makes defenders have to defend, and I still think that's an important part of football. So I, I, I liked when I actually seen Brendan put him on on the left-hand side and he was a left-footer, because I thought, oh, he's going to go down the side, and his first one was a bit unfortunate, he's dinked it a bit too much on it. Because I think sometimes that's where you have to break defences, you know? Um too many times now we've got the opposite foot playing in the opposite wing and I think that closes everything up, especially for a club like Celtic where everybody's playing inside the game anyway. It's going to be some weekend. It kicks off early. Lunchtime, 12.30 kick-off. Aberdeen up against, well, who else? Celtic. There's always a twist, isn't there? It's either against one of the big two when the manager, Barry Robson, has gone. Neil Warnock's name has been mentioned because he's got a place in Dunoon. You never know. Uh, Neil Lennon, who's also linked with the Ireland job. He seems to be one of the front runners. Alex Neil's name has also come into the frame. Um, you know how the table's looking at the top. Celtic on 57 points. Rangers on 52. There's uh, one game in it. Rangers have one game in hand. Hearts on 42. Killy on 32. And they're at Motherwell this weekend. Motherwell on 21 points. Stephen, what are you thinking about for this one? Huge game for you. Massive game for us. But I think over the last four games, the, the two before the winter break and the, the, the two after, we seem to have been turning a corner. I'm I'm impressed with, with the additions that we've made. Uh, Adam Montgomery unfortunately picked up an injury. He's out for three months. But um, Andy Halliday, I think when you're yeah. in a bit of a dogfight like this, it's, you need something like that in the midfield. He's, I'm not saying he's anywhere near as good a player as Alan Campbell, but he's of that mould that he'll roll the sleeves up, get stuck in and, and just keep things ticking in the midfield. And I think you need that. And that was evident in the performance by the team on... Saturday against St Johnson, we had Dravkovsky in there and Halliday who just kind of kept things ticking and we created loads of chances yep. We're just needing strikers that's and it. we've lost three yep. and we've not got any in so that's my main concern. Barry, what about Andy Halliday, you know him well through his time at Rangers? Yeah, I, I think it's a, a clever signing mm -hmm. um, by Motherwell, that bit of experience to go into the centre part and just anchor in there and keep things simple. Um, he's a good communicator as well. I think that will that will help the the model team. So that's a good bit of business. Lennon Miller's on the way back as yep. well, which mm -hmm. I think is important. I know you don't want to put a lot on a a young man's shoulders, but for me, he's he's going to be a proper midfielder. Um, and as Stephen said there, the thing that model were missing is that out and out goal scorer. Could it be Van Veen, Peter? Yeah, but also. Yeah. Let's give him a little bit of credit as well because Stuart was under a bit of pressure yeah, after doing sure. ever so well last yeah. year, mm -hmm. you know, and he was under a lot of pressure with the results and whatever. And it shows you sometimes you can be one game away from it. You never know how close you are. He's brought in a couple of experienced boys and he got the opportunity in the window because 
But then he gets the boy back to Arsenal. I don't know how to say his name. Bareth. Bareth. You know, yep. he'd, he'd done exceptionally well for them. You've got him for a season. Then all of a sudden they pull him back after half a season, which is a bit unfair. I don't think that should be allowed. But you've got to give Stuart Kerr well great credit for that and the Mullerwell board for standing by it because I think that's very, very important. We're talking about Barry Robson's situation and hopefully Mullerwell will see the benefit of that by standing by Stuart and get the results and the performances he's looking for. And then that may be sure other board members... This is where you've maybe got to deal with. You've got to ride it sometimes because sometimes that's the way it is. And as you say, they lost Van Veen, was it 30 goals last year or whatever? And there's a possibility because I think his wife's Scottish, am I correct? That's right, his partner's just uh, Scottish, a baby. What's the baby well. here? So yeah. Obviously, maybe there's a possibility that brings him back to the Scottish game, which he'd done exceptional last year, you know, to be fair to him. Stephen has said, where do you stand on the manager then? He gets so many plaudits, quite rightly, for that run early in the season. Well, there's money in the bank maybe that way in his personal kudos because of that what do you feel? I think he deserves time and I know there was that run that we went on that 15 game unbeaten run yeah. but I think Stuart's undoing was the fact that we'd been on such a good run um, from February until the end of the season when he came in and then we go on such a bad run I think for the club like Mullerwell if those results were spread you wouldn't be sitting there mm-hmm. asking for his job or questioning it so I think he's proved that, that he can get the best uh, out of his players and you hear the way that the players talk as well you can tell that they're playing for him and I think to me that's one of the most important things as well. Uh, I don't think we've had any luck with injuries either because Bayreuth got injured at St Mirren in the Cup and then shortly after that you lose Lennon Miller, two hugely inf- influential players on the side. So How good is L- Lennon Miller? Oh, this boy can play anywhere he wants. It's yeah. up to him how far he goes in the game. That's how good he is. It's really at his feet. And having spoken to his dad Lee, mm-hmm. he, he seems to have a really level head on his shoulders. Uh, he's matured very mature for the young man and I, I just hope that we keep him under contract I think he's got another two years at Motherwell and I hope that we uh, recoup money for him because I think that's where we've made some mistakes in the past the likes of Alan Campbell's been let go for nothing and you see Max Johnson last year being allowed to leave for the development fee the, the model for clubs like Motherwell has to be that we're selling these young players on for profit to keep us yeah he signed a new long term contract yeah, yeah, playing. yeah, yeah that, ah, that's yeah, obviously yeah. clever work yeah. with the, with the Motherwell board. Listen, he is, he's, I've seen him a, a number of times. The first time I actually seen him was at Ibrox. He came on, I think 20 minutes to go or 25 minutes well, to go. last season, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and he was just wanting the ball. He was demanding the ball all the time. <laughs> and I, I, when you see that at that age, at that stage, sorry, he was 16. And I'm thinking, I'm having him all day. Then you keep an eye on him, you watch him. And yep, he's certainly got a big future in the game if he keeps his feet in the ground. But I'm sure... I'm sure he will do that. Obviously, his dad's been a, yeah. a, an ex-professional football player. He's a lot better than his dad, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm sure he's he's on at him. And um, if he does continue to work hard, I think Muddle will struggle to hold on to him. But they'll get a decent fee mm-hmm. where they can then reinvest back into the squad. And the clubs need it, don't they? Yeah, you know? well, that's an interesting perspective that Stephen put on it there. I'm talking about the spread of results. Does that save your job? Go back to Barry Robson, yeah, sure. you yeah. know, all of a sudden qualifies for you, but Ronnie Ron yeah. last year, all of a sudden mm-hmm. doesn't go particularly well mm-hmm. this year, doesn't matter, out, see you. Stuart, it's a bit similar, mm-hmm. everybody was saying, oh, he's got to go, he's done this, he's not as good as last year. So what is success now? And that's what I'm saying. So when everyone's going swimmingly, I think there's got to be a spread. And whether that's results or performances, do you look at it and say, well, who did we lose? You know, how many players are injured? And I think that's what the Mullerwell board mm-hmm. have done. You know, young Lennon Miller started the season playing exceptionally well. You know, Bereth scoring goals. Yep. All these things, you know. And I think it's fantastic if you get that opportunity to try and build that. But I think it's people have got to look at it. Steady reading social media. We all understand that. You know, could you imagine yesteryear, Sir Alex Ferguson being the manager of Aberdeen seeing 14-year-old kids with these banners. Uh, banners. Yeah. Yeah. He'd have been he'd he'd a slap. Them. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even if he was a he'd manager. He'd them, I'm sure. yeah. And that's yeah. what I mean. So you've got to be careful of what to, you listen to. You've got to be focused. If you're only on a football club, especially in a modern-day game, it's so, so difficult now. And the same with young players. They've got to be able to manage that social media side as well, whether it's good, bad or indifferent. The, the trigger happy yeah. up at Aberdeen. Mm. That, in my opinion he's 8 points off 4th place I don't think they're going to catch out so their focus is make sure we get 4th place he's 8 points two, off two games, with two games in hand and uh, if he wins 8 two games then he's he, everything's ok I, I think they've been far too quick in my opinion Stephen you, you see loads of football yeah. who's going to get down is it Livy 
I, I think I can't see a way in which Levy survive. I don't see who they're going to bring in. I mean, when you hear Debbie Martindale talking about the financial problems and then saying things like he wish he could sell half the players coming mm-hmm. in the future, does that really attract you to go, I'm going to go and sign for Livingston? I, I just think the position they're in, it, it's a shame for them. I don't I don't see any way in which they can stay up. Now, I, but I'm grateful for that from a mm-hmm. Motherwell fan's perspective because usually when yeah, you go 15 sure. games without a win, I mean, that's almost half a season. Yet we are still sitting five points off the top six, which is mm-hmm. unbelievable to me. Um, so I don't see a way in which Livingston uh, stay up, unfortunately. And who do you think is going to win the title? So your mother will have been up against Celtic, Rangers? If, if you asked me yeah. before the window, I, obviously with the old firm match in recent memory, you, you, you would have said Celtic. But I think given the activity in the window and... I know there's a lot of Celtic fans not happy with, with the board's activity. You hear Brendan Rodgers coming out before January saying you need to add experienced players. They've not done that. Um, I think Rangers have been more on the front foot, more proactive. And right now, I would make Rangers favourites for the time. Peter, are you oh, having that? Go, <laughs> are you still there? Are you feeding him drinks yeah. since we have come in here? Do you know what? See, before Stephen came on this yeah. show, yeah. I, I told you he knew the game. <laughs> he knows the game inside out. <laughs> No, but listen, you can understand it. As I said it last week, Rangers needed players. There's no doubt getting away from that. But we were hoping that, obviously, the points that we dropped at certain times, the Celtic dropped at home, was big blow, you know, at certain times. Mm-hmm. Coming into this, I still fancy them because I think they have the quality in the, the, the front line. I think they've got the quality in the middle of the pitch. They've got that. Rangers have done exceptionally well under this manager. He's given them a great belief. There's definitely a different vibe about them. i seen them at Hibs last week. I thought... That was as sharp as I'd seen them for a long time. You know, they played with a purpose. And as I say, they're, they're definitely a fight on. I still think we've got the punchers. You know, I think we've still got the best players and if middle to front at this moment in time. Carter Vickers will be a blow. If he has got a slight injury, as people are talking about, that'll be a blow because I just think he gives a calmness route about yeah. anybody else. Mm-hmm. But young skills again into the weekend, I thought was excellent, you know. And as I said, there's a lot of fighting going on in this. As I said, the rest of the games we have to do, as Barry will tell you, you've got to look at playing everybody else and making sure you win their games. And Celtic have not done that at certain periods this year. That's the ones you have to win because I say about the Celtic Rangers games, they'll look after themselves, they always do and they always have done. You know, So it's the other points that you don't drop are going to be so important. Whether this window has a big influence on it, it'll be interesting to see. Because I think Rangers were short of some players, needed some in. Celtic have still got some players to come back. God willing, it's not like Hatati maybe come back with a slight injury or whatever. And you're hoping then they're like a couple of new signs to you. Because there is no doubt you've missed their quality. And I know their middle of the pitch has done well, but they've still got that wee bit of X factor as well. And they've held on to O'Reilly. We should remember Massive. that. Um, and Hatati, if people are just tuning in, he was injured yesterday playing for Japan against Bahrain, so we're waiting to find out. And you had an interesting point on that, Peter. If you're not playing that regularly, you're more liable to pick up a, a calf injury. Well, the problem you've got, Paul, is there's no doubt if you've not played in a particular game, you will train hard mm-hmm. after that. You'll, you'll put, go through a physical thing, whether it's in the football side of it, then you'll be preparing for the match. You're still going through all the mental side mm-hmm. of it and the preparation. You can be called upon in the first minute, you know, or maybe not go on. But then the next day you'll have another session against you. You're never really off your feet. Mm. And especially him coming back after injury, because he really was just back. I'm not even sure if he was back for his, from his injury before he went away. Um, so I think you've got to be very, very careful with that. Hopefully it's not too bad and hopefully it's precaution more than anything else because he's a top goal. Mm. But it's not only the fact if he goes and play, comes and plays back, he goes in and brings a different vibe oh, to the dressing room yeah. you know uh, to yeah. the dressing room the training pitch the quality goes up all these things are so so important but Greg Taylor was a big miss on Saturday for sure we'll come back to that Barry you heard Stephen a few moments ago and he thinks that Rangers five points behind one game in hand but they are on the way up and they're going to lift the title yeah they're definitely on the way up there's no doubt about it I think it's going to get right down to the wire that's my, my honest opinion um, I think it's going to get into the last couple of games of the season Um Rangers are, are, are starting to get players back. Jack, Lawrence, Raskin. Um, the, the, the big miss for me is Seema for the next couple of months. So that's why I think they've went out and, and trying to strengthen in the wide areas. He brought 15 goals to the to the party. Um, he, he was a, a big play, became a big player for Rangers over the last two or, two or three months. But listen, 
All Rangers need to do, and I've said it, Grant has mentioned it, you focus on number one and that's yourself. You just need to make sure you win games of football and don't look elsewhere. If there's points drop, you don't get carried away. And this is what I like about the new manager. He's very respectful. He's, he's very respectful about yeah. who he's up against in terms of Celtic, the players that they've got. Um, but at this moment in time, I'm sure that the, the Rangers fans are, are delighted. There's been only one blip. And that was a game at Celtic yeah. Park. Um, it took a one bit of magic. Um, I know Rangers got a goal back, but to go two goals up right after half time was a sucker punch. It was a top class goal from from Kyogo. But my honest opinion, I think this is going to be a really exciting title race. It sure is. Celtic fans have been coming on. Say they've been on for the last few days, saying did they feel because they beat Rangers twice this season that that would be enough? Mm. But I, I'm surprised. I don't know what Granty's thoughts on it as an ex Celtic player. I'm surprised that they've not went and got. Stephen mentioned that the experienced yeah. players, like one or yeah. two guys who have been about for a, a, a number of years, who have got that experience. Um, I'm, I'm just listen. That may change in the next 24 hours. But yeah, I, did I think that's the problem we've got everywhere. Baz, I, I, I think Celtic were hoping that was going to happen, mm-hmm. and we said it even at Christmas time. It's not as simple as that. Because you'll see down in England now, I think it's, is it 80 million it's only been spent? Oh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And it was 800 million right. wow. last year. Yeah. So for me, that tells you there's no players movement. So maybe players you thought there was an, an opportunity going to be there mm-hmm. to bring in and bring to your club who are maybe third or fourth choice because that's what we're going to be getting. There's absolutely no doubt of that because of the qualities down there. And I think that's a big problem because there's been no movement elsewhere. And I, as you say... The ones you thought, that was Barry talks about that experience to make you better. And I'm always a great believer. See if they're not better than what you've got, don't bring them. Because every all your players, Barry will tell you, we're all the same. We look at them and think, he's not good. And Brendan Rogers said that. Beginning of last month, he wanted, not project players, he wanted players ready to come in and play and yeah. challenge. Yeah, well, yeah. I think that's so, so important because at the end of the day, you have to bring players in the door that you can hit the ground run because you don't get time to build them up. Sure. Look, listen, no disrespect to big Matt Phillips that came. Matt came in because a big injury to Celtic. He wasn't fit when he came. He found it really difficult. And that's somebody for Liverpool. And who'd been playing games at Liverpool. So all of a sudden, it it just shows you it's not as easy to come and play here and play with that pressure. But you have to get the right ones. Well, I can tell you, breaking news after the break, I'll tell you there's a former Rangers and Liverpool player on his way. He signed for a Glasgow team. Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. I'm in the studio with Barry Ferguson, Peter Grant and Stephen Reside, who's been everywhere, including off the ball, but hopefully you're enjoying it even more here tonight, Stephen. That's, read the script. Love Peter. it everywhere. Yeah. Love it everywhere. <laughs> Tam, I can't do the yeah. voice. <laughs> <laughs> Big ball supporter, Tam, isn't he? Indeed. Ah, yeah. oh, of course he is, yeah. That's why he's got a man, you know what I mean? He's a, <laughs> he's a real uh, Motherwell supporter. We're going to get your uh, prediction for this weekend. A few people have been saying they agree with what you said, though, on your summation of where it is just now. Celtic were out and out the favourites. They looked a stronger team, but the momentum at the moment, and that's a Celtic fan, just been on a moment or two ago. Michael saying, I agree with Stephen Reside, because uh, he's fair. Celtic fans, what do you think? Rangers fans, you're on the crest of a wave. The key question is, will you beat Celtic to the title? And it could well happen. I mentioned just before the break there about some signing news. Queen's Park are signing Danny Wilson, the former Rangers and Liverpool centre-half, two-year contract. He's from Colorado, of course, in the MLS. That's where he's been recently. Barry, you remember him from your time at Rangers? Yeah, he was a young uh, player coming through. There was a lot of um, promise, no doubt about it. Um, Broke into the Rangers team, obviously got the move down to to Liverpool Mm -hmm. and it didn't uh, quite work out. He went out out on loan um, a few times and obviously found himself over in the MLS the last um, few years. So he's a player that I thought when... When I seen him at first as a young player, I'm thinking he's got a big future in the game. But sometimes it goes a bit pear shaped. It didn't really work out for him um, at Rangers and at Liverpool. But he's went over and made a right good career at in the MLS. And um, I don't know what, what age is Danny now. Thirty two. Thirty two. So, wow. So back here, couple of year contract back home um, in Queens Park. Are obviously trying to build something now with Callum Davison being appointed. Yeah. Good move. Six foot yeah, two. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, oh, the experience, the, the, the experience he's gained, you know, is incredible. You know, and it's funny you say he's thirty-two. God, yeah. we make him remember him breaking in as a youngster. Know. You know, yep. you think it was only yesterday, 
Um, and it just shows you, you know, where it ends up. Maybe like he's a homeboy, maybe wants to get back as well. So he could end up falling in Queen's Park lap, getting a top quality player. And Callan McKenna, we mentioned in the first hour the fact that he is wanted by three English clubs, and one of them is Manchester United. So, Peter, that would be some move for him if he goes to Old Trafford. And you mentioned the keeper earlier on. I mean, before you know it, could he be playing for Man U? But that's the thing. But uh, listen, you go there and you want you're going to get the best of everything. There is absolutely no doubt of that. So you're hoping that they're going to have the best goalkeeping coach. I know they've had their problems, obviously the goalkeepers and selecting them. First thing people look at now is obviously talk about their feet. There is the, the things we hear about them is outstanding with that. But the most important thing I always think is still in the goalkeepers. Can he catch the ball? Can he keep the ball out the net? And that's very important. But going to a club like Manchester United, you either sink or swim. Yeah. You've got to go there and put the work in harder than anybody else and have that focus on yourself thinking oh I've landed here all of a sudden yeah. that's when the work begins really you know you've worked really hard to get where you are now it's even harder now when you go to a club like that to make sure you can maintain that and get an opportunity because goalkeepers progress a little bit later you know you'll have a few loans of ab- I'm absolutely no doubt of that sort of thing but it's fantastic for like the Queen's part that they're absolutely allowed to sell players to like the Manchester United now, and it shows you what they're doing is something special also. Build the club, find talent and um, move on. they move on. That yeah, should be the way. Absolutely. Uh, Stephen, your goalkeeper is one of the Scotland goalkeepers now. Um, what are you feeling? It's been a tough season for him and, and yet he got his cap. What are you thinking for it Liam has Kelly? Been, I think Liam will look at the season and probably admit that it's, it's not been his best. Mm-hmm. And uh, For me, I think he's a great short stopper. Mm-hmm. Good distribution. One, My one flaw with Liam Kelly is he's the commanding of his area. And... I think you look at some of the goals that we've maybe lost um, has been down to, to, to that. So, But listen, he, he's a Scotland internationalist for a reason. He's obviously a good goalkeeper and confidence is huge as a goalkeeper. Sure. So it's massive. I just think that though, when you've not got a goalkeeper with that stature that's going to come and claim crosses, it immediately puts pressure on the defence when their set piece is being taken. And I'm not blaming Liam Kelly for the goal, but you can kind of see that uncertainty with the goal against St Johnson. It was a bit of a scrap on the line. It just fumbled into the net, and and it's just it wasn't his it was best a really moment. Poor goal it was. Barry, what do you feel about Liam Kelly? Very, very, very good short stopper. There's no doubt about that. Good, yeah. um, good kicker of the ball. That that is one of if you're going to talk about Liam Kelly, it's the size probably coming yeah. out commanding taking crosses, punching balls. Um, but look, I, I do, I, I rate him as a goalkeeper. Mm. I think he's good. Think I, I do think, yep, yeah, um, well, it depends on, on Craig Gordon. Craig Gordon. You think he takes both mm. Sander Clark and Craig Gordon? No, he's probably going to take the one that's playing from there. That's a great point. What do you that, reckon? That is a, that's a good question. Um, I think if Craig Gordon's fit, obviously played against Spartans in the Scottish mm. Cup game, and it looks to me if now he's back, yeah. I think... Even if Craig Gordon doesn't play much for the dressing room, I think depending. you've got to take him with his experience. Peter? I would definitely take him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind of that, you know, and whether that's behind Angus. Angus Gunn's the number one, isn't number he? One, but, but yeah. What a great learning experience for him. And God God forbid it harms to Angus. Yep. There's no doubt Craig Gordon for me is still the number one. He's amazing. You He's know. only forty one. I think if he wasn't yeah. away, yeah. I watched the Spartans wasn't game. It? I don't sort of save. Yeah, he made yeah. he made a couple of good mm-hmm. saves. Kicking looked fine. He looked. He looked if he hadn't been away for a year. Now it was a horrendous injury he suffered. Yeah. But that shows you the character. That shows you what he's all about. What he's had to go through the past year to get back on on the on the field of play. And and listen, if he's if he's fit, he goes. Absolutely. What about your own club, Stephen? Then we're heading towards the news. Still got a few minutes. What are you going to see between now and tomorrow night? Is there going to be another striker? What's the word? I think we need two, really. Because yeah. I think you look at the injury with John O'Beek is injured. Yeah. Theo Bear is the only fit striker that we've got at the club at the minute. We've lost Wilkinson and Shaw Bear. So I think we need two. But then again, if you said to me you could bring in Van Veen but you'll not get another one, mm-hmm. I would take that right now just because you know what you're... Because yeah. you know what you're getting. Yeah. You know what you're getting. But I just think... We can't afford to just bring in one because what happens if he gets injured? Then you've got John O'Beaker who's hardly played 90 minutes this yeah. season and Theo Baird who almost scored one goal last season but has seemed to have turned the corner in a motherwell jersey but I think it's a lot to ask just to be relying on Theo between now and the end of the season. And Stuart Kettlewell, to be clear, you hope the club continue to back him. You're beginning to pick up results. You're confident you'll 
you can escape playoffs. Yeah, I think we need to give Stuart to the end of the season and a chance to build again next season. And, I, and I'm saying that no matter what happens because you're the club coming out with statements that they're not in the best position financially, they need investment. So I, I feel like I've got an element of sympathy for Stuart um, in terms of what's happened with injuries this season. You look at what's happened to Adam Montgomery, you go to bring in a left back, he gets injured straight away. So he's maybe not had that wee bit of luck with injuries this season and he's shown in his time as well as a manager that, that he can get the best of his players and he can get results and for you personally for people who maybe haven't um, heard you here or uh, on off the ball or whatever you've had quite a journey so you were doing your, your um, podcast yeah. um, and you were assessing the grounds around Scotland to see how they were the disabled facilities where we spoke to you two years about, ago about that and it's grown from there and you're yeah. off to university yeah, we took a bit of break with the channel yeah. because um, my editor, was, me and my editor, have been, both been very busy. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's not a case of us not wanting to do it. That's always there. I just think I need to take the next step in my career and hopefully doing this and, and, and going to university. So. A couple of good questions tonight. I'm getting slightly <laughs> worried, but... <laughs> no, so I, I thought you should move round at the front. I'd be, de- I'd be, de- I'd yeah. be delighted. Yeah, that, I would take that all no, day. No, that, let's put it to the vote. That's yeah. three of us. Uh, uh, for Stephen uh, to get uh, that's me, front. you yeah. and Barry. Yeah. Right, I'll be back around. after the news then. <laughs> 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 Just let him go home. <laughs> and I'll tell you, um, I'll take him home. <laughs> well, he's been on and said, great question. You know, great point you made um, about Celtic. That the fact that they, it's been an uninspiring window, and the momentum could go, but it could Listen, change. It's going to be it tight. Change. It's going to be tight, yeah. and I may be wrong, yeah. but I just think that momentum. Yeah, wrong. <laughs> momentum, feeling around the ground. You hear that toxicity between the Celtic fans sure. and the board. I just think all of these are elements in the running, and Celtic have got a massive. 24 hours, well, 30 hours ahead. Yeah, I, 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 I know the performance wasn't great. You, you were at the game, only seen the, the, the highlights. I think it was the boon and obviously what was going on in the stands was more directed at the board, I think. Yep. Not at the manager. Yeah, just frustration. The players, yeah. They, they want to see. You know what fans are like. They sure. want to see. Yeah. And it's been well documented how much money Celtic have actually got. So I think it's more frustration from that side. Yeah. Well, you, you miss the two penalties as well. Sure. You know, if it goes to another... And listen, a lot of what's going on with Celtic, talking because we know talk about Celtic and whatever, it's got to be fair, they played really well, Ross County. Yeah, I thought sure. they'd done really well, you know. But I've seen them uh, under Derek and they've got a few batons and I thought they came there and they had a go. They tried to have a go and try and put Celtic under pressure. Their set plays were very, very good, apart from the last one where they thought was maybe their biggest chance, yeah. right mm-hmm. at the death, and they so, overhit it. Sure. You know, but, so wee things like that. And that, that listen, some of the, the games at home have not played well yeah. at all. Mm-hmm. We, we There's understand. a spark missing, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, and that, but that's what I'm saying. You can go two and a half up, you score right away mm-hmm. and you think, game over. You know, it could be five or six here. So all these wee things happen. And obviously, you're not playing as well as you would mm-hmm. like to be playing. Then, you have Rangers coming as well in the respect of, you know, they're getting the points, they're getting a wee bit of momentum mm-hmm. and whatever. So all these things, that is Celtic and Rangers supporting, playing, whatever you want for them. As soon as you feel you're under a little bit, oh, we're not doing enough. Mm. It's a bit flat at the moment. Can we come back to that in the next hour with you yeah, and sure. Barry? Stephen, before you go, and the uni, what's the course you're on? It's a TV and radio broadcast production at University of West Scotland. I'm not actually in yet, by the way, but okay. I've, I've applied in. Oh, well, I should get in. Let, I'm let's hope you're in. Football, so yeah. <laughs> and, and Stephen, as a wee fella, you, you were kind of, you know, you were written off in some ways, weren't you? You've, you've said that on here before. You're just an inspiration. No, well, that's for other people to say. That's yeah. not for me to say. I've, well, never, let my dis- I've yeah. never let my disability define me. My disability, it could have happened to anybody. So, listen, I'm just hoping that people like my opinions and think I know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, I'm been. just the same as anybody else. Exactly. To win the game. Exactly. What's the prediction then for this weekend? Motherwell against Kilmarnock? I think it's another draw. And I'm only yeah. saying that because yeah. I don't know who we're going to get in. So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go one each. Going to go one each. Peter, what do you think for that one? Let's do that. Well, Stephen is here. I fancy Kelly 2-1. <laughs> okay. He's back 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 that's because you said... That's because I said Celtic only going to go on the week. <laughs> <laughs> get back at me here. No, because right. something you said, if you think your goalkeepers are a bit small, uh-huh. the one thing oh, Derek's yeah. team are very good at is set, set plays. Oh, but, you but, know, Barry, what do you think? I'll wait till the window closes. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give you that. my opinion in French. The wisdom. <laughs> Stephen, thanks so much for joining us in this hour. And we'll speak to you. We'll hear from you soon. The news is next. Then we're back. There's more. We're watching the window. The Go Radio Football.
Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go. We are keeping our eye on the window. We being Barry Ferguson, Peter Grant and Paul Cooney. Stephen Reside was with us in the first hour. He's looking forward to Motherwell against Kelly at the weekend. Any update in the window, Barry? Just checking in the last two minutes on the news? No, no, no? just... Um... Just going through the internet to see if anything's happening. Nothing's happening. But what I will say is, Stephen, very good. Some really good points. Um, I know, right? And hopefully <laughs> you take him up in the, the offer yeah. where he can replace you. Um, I'd be, it would be a I wee break. A nation generations would say brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely. I love best, no. best I've heard. Yeah. Best questions, Wasn't best it? answers. I agree. He this knows his father. This yeah. is a godfather <laughs> radio <laughs> over here. Yeah, absolutely. Must be some uh, reason. Well, still I remember on. when yeah. I was a young player, uh, uh, Paul was leading it when I, I was young. I, I was the young reporter <laughs> of the day. <laughs> yeah. I know I've told you that the day. I, I was at You've actually got better as you've got older. <laughs> In what department? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember that day, yeah, breaking news a young 17 year old player for Celtic, Peter Grant, we'd never heard of you. Jimmy Nickel, it was one of his last games at it was, uh, it Rangers. Right, he got sent off, yeah, he did. I did. I remember that. Stood in Brian McLean. Yeah. And I got an interview with Jimmy Nichol. Yeah. Oh, I was in among the fans as well, so the Rangers fans come in and said, Jimmy Nichol, you know, he's a, great, a great Rangers player and great something else he said as well. It was hilarious these days, things you can't see. But just people, honest people, going to the game, looking forward to it. There was, what, 40,000 Rangers fans, there would be 8,000 Celtic fans in those days. But listen, that was then. But listen, Stephen, I hope he gets that university course because yeah, it absolutely. is brilliant. Well, listen, you know, I'll that, tell you what, the way yeah. he spoke there, it's the first time I met him. He was yeah. outstanding. Privileged, I, thought, yeah, I thought he spoke exceptionally well. As you say, he knows not just about his own club. He knows about the other clubs and what they're going through. And he speaks he speaks like a supporter in one way, but he understands that the pressures that come when we're not getting results as well. He understands that managers need time, as we've spoke about, because we think that's important. Because there's a lot of young boys getting jobs now. Yeah. And it can be their first and last job, unfortunately, because that's yeah. the way... I know what it's like myself, so how difficult it is. And I just hope that some of them get more time because they do, they're do. they going to make mistakes, there's going to be bad runs, and it's how they handle that. Sometimes you see the success, and that's why you've got to tip your hat to them all what they've done with Stuart Kettlewell during that difficult period. Of course. I know he's an old man yeah. as well, he's an old man. That's right, a coach. coach. Yeah. 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 I've bumped into him a few times. Nice great, guy, isn't he? Yeah, yeah two uh, real nice guys. They're in the car now, on the way, and tuned in, tuned in somewhere else now. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm saying you better, they better be on here, for sure. Uh, um, headlines today, well, n there's no major signings uh, at the moment, but we woke up today with the news that the Norwich City striker, he's not the out now striker at the moment, that he could be coming to Celtic. Is that the case? Adam Ida. So, some interest in him from abroad. 22-year-old, you said that in the first hour, Peter, Republic of Ireland striker. Um, what kind of player is he? I'd say he's more of a powerful striker. Okay. You know, one of these ones, more direct. I wouldn't say he's a link player in any shape or form. I think he likes running and seeing the goals. I think he's one of these guys with an opportunity. If he's not got a lot of time to think, I think that's when he's at his best. You know, some strikers, if they've got a lot of time to think, they maybe yeah. take two touches, three touches, and then not hit the target. I think he's one of these ones that's more off the cuff, you know, just going bang, it's in the back of the net. That's on what I've seen of him at Norwich and the games I've seen. And predominantly, that's been highlights, you know, at the time. So, as I say, I, I'm looking if people say is that power. Well, I'm looking at O. I think O's got that power. And maybe it's because I like O in the respect to that. I think, he, as I say, at certain things he does. Kyogo's the number one by far. But there are certain things that O does. And as I say, I always judge on you. I've spoken to defenders that play against them and they don't like playing against them. Mm. And that's always a good sign for me. You know, if defenders don't like playing against you, I know he's got to take more of his chances, but I think that comes down to the fact that there's, there's not a lot of minutes if we speak about. And you can say that about either as well. People talk about, oh, he's only scored X, Y and Z. But if you put the minutes together, it's not a lot of minutes. The interesting thing is they're talking about Van Hoy don't go to Norwich. Yeah, with Sydney. That's, that's the interesting thing. So what does that tell us? Because he's really been linked with Celtic yeah, for weeks. Yeah, of course, and I'm sure yeah. Big Pierre would love him to come to Celtic. Mm -hmm. You know, I know how he was adored with the Celtic fans. And as I said, probably maybe Celtic's looking at it and think he's not played enough games. Like also, you know, and it's difficult. I don't know, Derek maybe says, or young uh, Ferguson Young says about Sydney over there, how, what's happened in Bologna, who plays in front of him, did he deserve more chances? Mm -hmm. Because he's been over there not playing many games, and that, that's always difficult, you know, after scoring goals last season, and I know people say that 
in the Dutch league, you've still got to put the ball in the back of the net. He done that very well. Has Lewis said anything about him? No, <laughs> no, really. If I'm being honest with you, mm. he's not played much football in Bologna. Yeah. yeah. Mm. He's not been in. Uh, he's not started many games. Obviously, he's a player that needs to go out. Obviously, heavily linked. What obviously Granty says about his, his dad, um, but I think he's a total different player. His dad was a, a top player. There's there's no doubt about that. Um, but just been looking at either 115 games, 17 goals. That doesn't he scream out that he's an out and out goal scorer. No. And he's 22 as well. You know, is he one of these project players that obviously when everybody knows Celtic's model. Um, I just expected and understand that as a a difficult window to get players in who are going to hit the ground running but I, I did expect somebody to come in with a bit more experience mm. and certainly that is an area of the pitch where they do need to strengthen because I don't think they've replaced Yakimakis. No, well, exactly. I don't. That I works. really don't. Sure. I was about to ask you, um, Peter, is he like Yakimakis? No. No, exactly. No, sure. no, he's not like no. that. You know, is it, and as I say, I, that's why I'd say O's more a Yakimakis. I know he's not, but he's more that type. Yeah. You know, you're playing against him, put it that mm. way. And I don't care. He's not going to play before Kyogo unless, mm. God forbid, he's injured, you know, in any shape or form. So that that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. What what sort of striker? It's such a tough window. And I understand the frustrations of supporters. I understand the, the frustrations of managers when they're looking to try, try and get players in. We've spoke about it. You see England, there's nobody moving because of that. You know, and that is the problem. And if nobody moves down there, they do not let anybody out. I was at clubs down there for so many years. And everything goes in a certain way. And Barry will tell you, domino effect. He moves to that club, all of a sudden somebody moves in there, OK, we can get him now. That's what you've got to hope. And because there's been no movement, especially in England, that's why I see there's a problem. You know, he'd not be getting the, the transfers even up to here because there's been no domino effect because nobody has knocked that first domino down. Yesterday morning people were saying that Danny Ings, is he coming? Mm. Could he not maybe have come in alone or is that just the pie in the sky? Rangers have brought in Silva, not such a big name, but a £33 million player and Rangers must be paying a fair whack of his... Yeah, they'll be paying a fair whack yeah. of his salary. I, I, I don't think he's an out-and-out number nine. No. I, I think he's more playing off the left or off the right or just behind a a main striker but listen it's still a good signing he, he has played a few games for Wolves um, and it's still early stages but I'm sure the Rangers fans will be expecting him to, to start producing the goods in terms of scoring goals Diamondi's um, a good player Paul he can handle the ball the only problem when I, I, I mentioned it to the manager when I bumped into him on Friday night at the Burn mm. Supper he did say that physically he's still got to get there a wee bit um, so that may be a, a kind of one that they're going to work on and hopefully look look ahead mm. to the, the, the following season. But he's certainly got the attributes, mm. uh, Diamondi. Um, I wonder, he, he looks apart. Yeah. What about Shefty? Left back? I know it's I, gone quiet. But I, I, it's it's yeah. difficult to... I mean, I'm like everybody, I go on the internet and you have a look at them. Mm. MD can look good on mm. in the internet. <laughs> um, but listen, it's a player that he, he has tracked. Um, and he obviously sees it uh, as a sorry he sees him as a player that mm. can certainly strengthen the, the squad we're still waiting on what's going to happen with Ridvan yeah. and Barisic has mm. obviously been allowed to to go into the, the final months of his contract um, so that'll be interesting the next 24 hours to see if either they two or one goes out the door or even the, the two of them go out the door you think that's what they're waiting on that's what I'm saying Paul about this domino effect that if one goes out the door, then they can bring this boy in. I mean, see, in terms of Ridvan, Granny, I, I've watched him the last few games, he's impressed me. He's looked apart, Ridvan. Yilmaz. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah Yilmaz, or Sorry, Ridvan, no, whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever yeah. we want to call yeah. it. Going forward, yeah. I certainly like your look yeah. at him. Defensively, is he physically big enough and strong enough? I'm unsure, but going forward, he certainly looks apart. We know what Barisic can do, but I think he's going into the final month of his contract. I think he's looking to go elsewhere whether that's in this window or obviously the summer and Peter you mentioned earlier same position um, Greg Taylor's injured Burnaby played at the weekend I mean it looked as though he'd be on his way out but yeah it's a, it's a difficult because all of a sudden you think they're going to go out the door and then Greg gets the injury but it just shows you how important he is because I, I think he does a lot of good things that goes unnoticed uh, I'm a supporter of his there's no doubt in my mind of that because it, it's a difficult role he plays as a Celtic left back. He gets forward, creates a lot, and helps Palmer 
because he runs by him so many times and doesn't get the ball. And I just think you realise that on Saturday, how big a job it does for Celtic and the role he does. Yes, you're always looking to improve areas of the field if you're going to get better. That's the way football is. And as a football player, you've got to be playing at your best all the time. So I understand that. The problem is, if they let him go now, then you'd be playing a right footer on the left-hand side because there's no doubt in my mind Tony would move or Tony Rawson because that's what I thought, as I said last week here, that if it was going to be on the way it yeah. played, yeah. I think he'd have moved Tony Rawson there instead of moving uh, big skills out to yeah. left-back. I, I know the concern for Celtic fans is they want to see signings, but for me it would be Carter Vickers. Yeah. I'd be worrying what, what's going on there because um, he's huge. I know Callum McGregor is huge, yeah. but he holds that defence yeah. together. Um, Carter Vickers so that that is a worry um, listen I'm sure they would have been delighted with the news that he signed a new yeah. five and a half year contract but you want to see him on the pitch if you're a Celtic supporter you mentioned Robbie Matondo was Robbie at the burn supper the other night <laughs> you just slipped that in was that the Rangers burn supper was it a good night yeah yeah, yeah well, it was good I, I don't like haggis no no I don't kidding? like it I don't no, like it no, no. it's not my scene yeah. I'm, a, I'm a basic here it's quite basic when you eat it though. Nah, just, it's, anyway, it's but not no. for me. But no, it was night, good. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was good. It was the manager was there, the assistant manager, uh -huh. some of the board, and some ex players. So it was a good night. Were you speaking? Did you go up and give the yeah, toast? I mean, yeah, Big Lee McCullough went up and done ten minutes. Oh, not, right. not a toast, just went up. Uh -huh. um, a poem. They, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> they fired a few questions, answered a few questions, and listen, it was good. Good to see some. Uh, DJ was there. Derek oh, was Johnson. Big Derek. How is he? Yeah, yeah he's, he's looking good. Good. Looking yeah. good. Um, there was a few other ones there. So, and I, I had a, another brief catch up with the, the manager. Just he was mentioning about. Uh, I was asking about Diamonde because it's obviously a midfielder, and you, yeah. you want to know what his background does. Because obviously I've been on and had a look at him, and he says that he's he's got big expectations of him. Um, just physically, he still needs to get there a wee bit, but he's a player that they're they're keen on getting in. What's he saying about Shankland? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. There's I never no mentioned it. No, sure. Uh, you see, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? He's got the inside info and he's not telling us. <laughs> he'll, he'll tell us as soon as he can. I would tell you. I would tell you. Of course. What about Majowski? I mean, am I barking up the wrong tree? Is he not? Is he going to come to Celtic? Is there any prospect? Because we've been talking, of course, about the Norwich player. It just seems that all the things that were mentioned weeks ago, none of it is happening. But it's never as easy as that, Paul. You know, know yourself, it I depends know. financially. Yeah. You know, if, if Celtic or Rangers go in for a Scottish player, yeah. what they're asking is going to be through the roof. There is absolutely no doubt that that yeah. happens. And if you think the worth is there, I don't know. You know, it depends mm -hmm. what way you're trying to build and what type of player you want. What do you think of Majofsky? I've, I've been impressed with him. I, yeah. I even watched him the other week there live and his movement was very good. You know, he, he comes in short and goes in behind and never gives... And, and he, he looks a real team player. But the main thing about him, he goes into an area where he can score. Once he does all his movement, once he gets makes his runs and whatever, he always finds himself in the area where he can put the ball in the back of the net. And, and to be fair, that's all you can ask for for a striker. And that's all I can judge him on. Uh, going on his performances for Aberdeen, could he play for a Celtic or Rangers? Or being that Celtic and Rangers' squads, absolutely. Yeah. Barry, Majofsky, scored again last I, night. I like him. I mean, I, I've said that a few times on here. I wasn't too sure when he first came mm. into the country and when Aberdeen signed him. Um, but he's grew on me. As Granty just mentioned there, uh, very good movement. And he does the hardest thing. He's a goal scorer. And he's got all type of goals he scores as well, similar to Shankland. Not just, not just tap ins, which is a centre forward's best goals. Headers um, from outside the box as well, good strikes. Um, so, yeah, I'm surprised that there's no been. I, I know we're talking about Rangers and Celtic here, but I'm surprised there's no been more interest in him um, because he obviously, since he's come into the country, he certainly scored goals. International player yeah, as well. Yeah, and yeah. he's 24. Yeah. Um, I thought he played very well against England I watched him against England and yeah. I thought he played well against England I know that people complain about England centre backs or whatever but I thought he played well in the game gave him a problem gave his and then the thing about when you're playing for a country is it North Macedonia mm -hmm. is it he's from and I look at it and I think to myself if you want out of trouble where's your striker you know if you're not going to be able to play through as they say the lines now if you're not going to be able to play forward can your striker be in a position that he can look, give you an out ball and I thought he'd done that very, very well. Which sometimes you look at their game and you think, all round, what's he missing? But I thought he'd done that well against England. 
And then you look at the games here, it gets himself in position to score goal and score goals. You know, as Barry spoke about, different types of goals. So you put them all together, you think, at 24 years of age, yeah. there'll not be many strikers like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we keep looking all over. And sometimes we, we look at it, and as I say, yet, yesteryear, you'd go into the Hibs, the Marvels, and take all their strikers, anybody who was scoring goals, made some fantastic ones that came for the, the guys here. But sometimes we look beyond that because we think we're getting more value abroad. I'm not so sure, sure. at times. Duncan's been on, a big Aberdeen fan, goes to them home and away. He wants to know Barry Ferguson, Peter Grant, who do you think will be? Who would you choose as the next manager of Aberdeen? So they're not going to go down. They want to be top six. They need to be top six. They were third last the season. One that's, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Yeah. The, the one that's screaming out to me is Alec Neil. Right. And why? Why? Because he's been linked with a, a few jobs up mm. here. He's been linked with Aberdeen in the past. Um. He's got a bit of experience, but been down with, obviously, first of all, Hamilton Aki, yep. down to Norwich, got them promoted, Preston North End, yep. Stoke City. So, uh, if I'm a betting man... Uh, you work at this moment in time. Yeah, um, indeed, yeah. So, if I'm a betting man, I would I would go with Alex Neil. Peter? Yeah, I think it's a very good shout in the respect to that. You know, Alan Burroughs will probably know him as well, because Hamilton and mm. Mullerwell obviously don't have far apart in the respect of that. Yeah. Um, but he's obviously done remarkably well. He's done a great job at Norwich. He's done really well. And listen, he knows the he game. He came in after you. Yeah, a long yeah, time sure. after me. Well, yeah. right. He's okay. a wee while yeah. after me. Um, but as I say, he's done a very good job there, you know, and he found himself, yet again, we talk about being successful, you know, and people know he was doing well at Sunderland and all of a sudden decided to, he must have been reading the script there the way Sunderland was going and thought, well, I'm out of here, and then went to Stoke, and the results never went particularly well there. And that happens, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But he's definitely got the experience, definitely knows how to handle players, knows the Scottish game, so he ticks all the boxes, that, probably all the boxes that Aberdeen are probably yeah. looking for, but it's going away from maybe somebody that's a connection with the club. Because yeah. had Stephen mm -hmm. Glass, the manager, didn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, the new chairman, yeah. had Stephen Glass. Mm -hmm. You know, Barry Robson, all the Aberdeen backgrounds and Aberdeen supporters. Jim Goodwin didn't, though, did he? Or? No, oh, sure. but, but Jim didn't no. last that long. No, sure. You know but what I mean? Nobody does. So, this, is three, this is with four managers yeah. in three years. What about Neil Lennon? You've played against him, Barry. We had him. Yeah, the, uh, that's another shout. He's, I know he's desperate to get back into management, but he's been heavily linked with the Republic Island mm -hmm. job. Um, whether he, he wants day in, day out, or does he want the international scene where... Well, you're away in camp, what, four or five times a, a year? Yeah, it's very um, different, isn't it? I, I'm sure yeah. he'll be in the running. Um, but th listen, that's up to Neil Lennon if he, if he fancies going up to Aberdeen. Yeah, yeah listen, it'd be interesting. I think the biggest problem you've been Celtic or Rangers to go to Aberdeen. And I don't mean yeah. that in any shape or form. I just think that's a difficult one because people remember these certain yeah. things, when it's, especially when it's not going particularly well. Euro boss did it with great success. A long time ago, yeah, Billy McNeil. Absolutely, yeah. did. Absolutely, you know. And listen, Sir Alex Ferguson, not with his Rangers background, mm -hmm. was exceptional. You know what I mean? So, but that's the standard where you're you're judged by Aberdeen, as with Sir Alex Ferguson's group. And there's no getting away from that. Yeah. That's where you are. You know, when you're at the big clubs, that's what you're judged on. So at this moment in time, instead of being what they were at that particular time, number one, they're fighting to be the third in the league. And that's where they should be. As we talk about financially, I don't know exactly what it was, but that's where they should be. Because they see the points, and I understand that, so they maybe take a different route. Somebody that's not got the pressure of being an Aberdeen mm -hmm. supporter in the respect of that. And sometimes that's better, because you can go in there with that yeah, old mind. Say, right, yeah, right, yeah, I'm going to go in here and make sure we do the job, because we want this club to be successful. And Alex got all the credentials for that. Neil's got all the credentials for that, because he's been at Celtic under the pressure he worked at Celtic. But I just think Alex Neil, maybe the fact he's been out of the Scottish game and done it in England as well, okay. maybe give him the nod on that. Barry? They need to be realistic as well. Yeah. Mm. They're not going to be winning championships. Yep, I get they need to get to semi-finals and, and finals, but what they need to do is get a manager and, and back him and stick behind him. Don't be firing after six months or 12 months. Look, look, look at the success they had. I, I know that. What, how many trophies did Derek win? One. He won one. Like, I know was, he got know. to finals sure. and, and yeah. whatever, but that was an eight-year period where they stuck behind him and backed yeah. him. And I think they need to get back to that. But what is success, Paul? We're talking about Queen's Park now. Yeah. Callum Davison. Mm -hmm. He's won the same amount of trophies as Rangers. In the last. Um, is it two? Um, 
two. Uh, no, Rangers get three. Rangers get and three. Because obviously uh, the yeah, title, then, yeah, yeah. yeah. Scottish that's Cup right. and the League Cup yeah, now. But exactly. you're right, until a few uh, weeks ago, it was yeah, the same. Yeah, but was at St. John's, okay. I'm talking about. I know, yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, yeah. within, we yeah. go a little bit of period of time without winning games, he's out the door. Sure. The most successful manager in their history. Mm-hmm. You know, that shows you the fine line now. So what is success? Is it lasting your job for two seasons? Is that success now? Because... Steve Bruce came out with a comment many, many, many years ago and everybody laughed at him because he just went into a job and then ended up leaving to go somewhere. He said, you never had a moving target. Mm-hmm. But then the managers get criticised for moving yeah. when they're doing sure. well. But if they don't move... The club moves. The club, club they moves they move them. them on. After yeah. three, three months. Yeah. And that is a problem. We've got to get away from that. Let's try and build it because even for the youngsters coming through, where you see them, let's try and build. There are certain clubs and all the clubs in Scotland now are selling clubs. So yeah, your big sure. players play well. Celtic yeah. and Matt Arrela have done fantastic to hold on to them. And that's one of the big wins. In the Absolutely. Yep, 100%. Sure. Yep. So anywhere else, if you're producing players and selling them, that's success. Probably more than results at times. Quick break and then we're going on the lines. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get your home ready for the markets with help from their team of experts. Let's go! This time tomorrow night on the programme, it'll be Andy Walker who'll be with us and Leanne Crichton joining us on the programme. Craig Moore will be back soon. He's out and about looking for players. I think he's been far east, so we'll find out, no doubt, next week. And then Barry's back on Friday night with Mark Guidi. So uh, tonight, Peter Grant and Barry Ferguson with me, Paul Cooney. Stephen Reside was with us earlier, but he will be back. The guys have started to uh, put pressure on, I know, <laughs> Sh- shaky peg, I, I don't blame you. Um, let's go on the lines, here's Paul, a Rangers fan, good evening Paul. Uh, evening Paul, evening Peter and evening Barry. Good evening Paul. Yeah. As always. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I th- thanks for letting me on tonight. Um, I, I suppose I was just kind of, you no. Know, recently as a Rangers fan, it's, it's getting quite positive, really liking Clermont, uh, bringing new players in, excited about that as well, so a lot of positive things, but... Yeah. I just wanted to kind of check in and see if maybe you guys have heard that Barry's heard through, through the grapevine. Um, Steve Davis, I would love to be able to get into the coaching side of the Rangers. And it's been a wee bit quiet in the... I know Graeme Soonis was linked with Rangers in some sort of capacity. And I think if he's had any input in come on, then you know, that, that's had a positive impact, to be honest. And I would like to see Graeme Soonis back in some sort of capacity. But as I said, it's been quite quiet. I just wanted to be heard anything for, for Davis and... Uh, yeah, well, like you, Barry, obviously Stephen Davis last game was announced that he's retired. But Yeah, and I thought it was a brilliant send-off. Yeah. I, I seen it when he was in the, the training yeah. centre and all the players getting up and applauding him when he get presented with a, with a strip. And yeah. he thoroughly deserves it. Brilliant Rangers player. But most importantly, he's a brilliant guy, a brilliant professional. And I think, do you know what, now, the next few months, I think he'll just go and take a bit of time with his, with his family in the next two or three months and then probably at the end of the season decide um, what he's going to do listen I get what Paul's saying it'd be brilliant to have him back at Rangers in some sort of capacity and I'm hearing about Northern Ireland um, Mick O'Neill yeah. maybe want to bring him into that scene I can see him doing that as well so we just need to wait and see but um, just speaking for a personal note it was a brilliant send off and it's listen 39 he's done brilliant to get to that age but the last year's just took its toll on him he's He's obviously found it difficult with the serious knee injury he had and and I think he's made the right decision for himself and his, and his family. Because he tried everything to come back. He did, he, he, he had another operation. he done all the rehab stuff, but listen, sometimes you just get to an age, yeah. Granny will tell you, where it just doesn't feel right mm. and you just can't go and do what you, you could do previous years. Uh, and listen, you've got to make that tough decision at some stage. That is the hardest decision. But I think it's a right one for Stevie Davis. Um, the decision was made for you, wasn't it, Barry, in your career? You, yeah, it was made by the surgeon. Yeah, he, yeah, at 37, he just told me after my last operation, look, it's, if you want to try and play in charity games or play fives or sevens or get out running or do a, a bit of walking, you need to give it a bye. And um, listen, it's, it's tough, that first 24 hours. It is... Is so sore because that's all you've known all your days is, is going in and training and, and playing games of football um, but at the back of your mind you know at some stage it, it has to happen every professional it's the hardest part but that's the beauty of having a good family around about yeah. you and good friends that's what you need and I'm sure State Mill I know Stephen Davis has got that and is that what you did you turned to your family your wife the kids your mum and dad your brother you, you didn't just hold it 
inside you? Did you speak to them about it? Yeah, but I kind of knew in the back of my mind. When I'd done that injury, it was down at the den against Millwall. Mm. I knew as soon as I, I, I'd done my ankle, I knew I had to go in for another operation. You know what it's like, mm. walking off, limping off. And I knew um, after that surgery, I kind of had it in the back of my mind that that was going to happen. Um, and listen, the surgeon was, was just honest, and that's all you need. You need honesty. And when he told us that was it, I had to give it a bye. Um, Listen, you, you know it's tough, but listen, you need to go on with it. It's a short sure. career, but listen, I would not, wouldn't career. change. Yeah. It's a brilliant, I, I live my boyhood dream, playing with the team that I supported. Peter, another Lancashire boy, you lived your boyhood dream as well. Yeah, I was very fortunate, Paul. I was out a few times, probably lost about a year all in. in. We had no injuries and illness, um, so I was quite fortunate that way. But I've been on the other side, you're talking about family. Mm. My oldest boy, Peter, had two ACLs and a snapped Achilles. And my youngest one's just recovered after yeah. a year. He's been out for a year as well, through the period, the same as, as Stephen, actually. It was just, a, I think Stephen got it a couple of uh, weeks after it. But I think Philip Clement has already said about Stephen going back in. He used to go away and think about it, and then he said there will definitely be a place for him at Rangers. And we spoke about it last summer, you know, about Stephen Davis and how important they were, you know, around about that group. And I just felt it looked from the outside that they were too distanced, and I thought... Michael Beale at that particular time made a boo-boo on that. I think the likes of Scott Arfield and Stephen Davis could really yeah. have helped him mm -hmm. round about that period. And I think that's where he's been quite cute this year. Okay. You know, keeping the likes of Alex Ray, Ed Stephen, to help him with the first few games. Yeah. And then Stephen just wanted to continue his rehabilitation. And I think that's so that's important. You know, yeah. I think it's so, so important because there's certain things you, you think you understand. Mm -hmm. yep. But Glasgow is completely different. You know, it is completely different. There's a different type of pressure comes from Glasgow than the expectation and what mm. the do's and the don'ts, mm. you know, sort of thing. And listen, could you imagine a Celtic or a Rangers player doing what Marcus Rashford done, you know, the other night there on the Thursday night at that particular time? I think everybody would have yeah. arms. But not only that, supporters would be letting them know. And, and that's what I like yeah. about the new manager. He, he gets it with Granite Shoes, mate. He understands that he needs to have people run about the club that mm. that understand it and, and he's no shy with asking as, as I said to you sure. that, I mean, I, well, I you're around in, the club now yeah and I bumped into him in La Manga and, and you know what I was so impressed with him he's, he's very respectful of the mm. Scottish game and that, that's what I liked about it he understands that there's going to be tough yeah. times mm. but he understands he's here for a reason and he's here to win games of football um, and um, he, he's totally getting it and as I said there's been only one blip I can see since he's come in. It's still early doors and, and that's another thing, he totally gets that. There's still a long, yeah. long way to go before he gets to where he wants to get to. But, listen, the Rangers board are trying everything in their power to try and back him. And then I think you'll see that again mm. in the summer. Paul, you've asked there about Graham Souness. He's not been mentioned for a couple of months, mm. Barry. He Is... was big on the Philip Clement appointment. He was part of the process as well. And that's another thing you've got to give the board credit mm. for. They went and asked somebody who right. changed the Scottish game he came up here and, and, and done a brilliant mm. job so they went to him to get his opinion listen it, it falls on the, the board to make the appointment yeah. but I like the fact that they're going and asking experienced guys who know the game and certainly he was a well I think that's, what, I think that's what they've done well because Graham came out mm. and said that he said Frank Lampard yep. yeah. mm -hmm. you know but he said he was really impressed with Clement mm -hmm. But he thought Lampard had that hunger in his eyes as well. He said, but I was really impressed with him. But it just shows you the board have been strong on the appointment. Because, it OK, they'll listen to you, but we're going to make this appointment. And I think, if I'm right, was it the chairman who was speaking the other day, they were saying it was more of an interrogation. He knew the limits. Right. Uh, he yeah. knows the limits that when he spoke to Clement, he said to him, he must have been telling him, this is what you can spend on players. This is the sort of salaries we play. This is the sort of league you're in. All these things. So he was well aware. So there was no excuses in turning back and saying, Oh, well, you never told me this. I thought I'd be sure. able to do this or that. So, and that's the way, I think it was the chairman of the Rangers okay. said that the other day there. Is there a place for Graham Souness at the moment? He's always welcome there, but yeah, do you expect I, I, him? I think it's, I, I don't know. I, I, the line of us is, yeah, sure. yeah, he's definitely going to come back yeah. in or he's, he's not coming back in. I, I, I think talks are maybe still long going. We just need to wait and see. Um, I, I really don't know. Uh, but what I do know is that the Rangers have got a manager in place that, that certainly knows his way about the, the, the game. There's no doubt about that. Paul, where are you about Cyril Dezos now? Scored again. Nice one, Cyril. The fans were singing. You might have been one of them at the weekend. And what are you thinking now? Is he, have you found 
he, I, Barry's column last Friday was talking about Mark Haley, and I remember when Mark Haley came, huge reputation. To come hey, can I just say, I'm yeah. not saying he's in the same and level as Mark. I said that in the column because I, I, I had a few people saying, Oh, you see, you yeah. putting him against so Mark sure. Kately. I was just saying, Mark Kately had a tough first year, and look what he turned out to be. He was an unbelievable player, yeah. not just for Rangers, but oh. for AC Milan yeah. and Monaco and, and England. But I've seen something in, in yeah. Dessers the, the last couple of months. I've seen an improvement. I still think there's a bit to go in him, but I think his last two goals, the one at Easter Road, Thought it was excellent, but that goal in, in uh, Saturday against St Mun was a brilliant wow. touch past the goalkeeper, and how quick he took the finish made um, was a was a was a brilliant goal because if he took another extra touch, the St Mun defender was in, and he would have cleared it off the line. And I think his all round game is start you're starting to see signs that there is an improvement, and then you read the obviously the, the papers and say that the club's interested <laughs> elsewhere. Yeah. yeah, Paul, what do you feel about him? Right. <laughs> Some great goals. I mean, the one against Betis was, was outstanding, mm-hmm. and you no, know, the one against Hibs was, was a nice goal. But it's the key moments, Paul. Do you know, I go back to the one at Parkhead, one and one with Joe Hart. To me, if it was Lauren Shankland, it would have been in the back of the net. Do you know, so I'll wait to, to the big games, the key moments. That that's where I think that will kind of come. But listen, maybe Silver might make a difference as well. Maybe you know Cortez and these other players come in mm-hmm. might make that wee bit of difference. And, and come on, it's having a a positive effect on quite a few players and you, you see that when new managers come in and things like that but I think come on it's a wee bit as I said in your show before it, to me I'm not saying he's in the same mould as Walter Smith you know legend and everything else but he might be the first proper manager that Rangers have had since Walter Smith in the sense of what I mean by that is managerial experience he don't walk into a Monaco job for nothing he, he's won titles over in Belgium and things like that you look back in the, the war buttons and Muttys and all these types of people that have been in the job. Uh, Gerard, he was he wasn't a manager. He was a um, a development manager, if you want to call it that. Um, he didn't. He had the the, the the title and he had you know, the, the the big name, the reputation, but he wasn't in that style of management. I don't I don't know guys think of that, but do, do me, you know what I respect about him? He's not getting carried away. Right. Feet in the ground. Uh, yeah, yeah like I, that. That, that's what yeah. I like. And I keep going back to the word respect. If you listen, he's he's respectful. No, not just about Celtic, about whoever he's coming up against, whether it's St Mun or whether it's Hearts at Tencastle or Hibs at Easter Road, he's very respectful and he respects the game. And I think if you do that, because it's a tough place to play, Granny's mentioned it. I've seen so many players and managers come and struggle, um, certainly in the west of Scotland. And that's one thing he's got off to a brilliant start. There's no doubt about it. He knows the game. He's done his homework. I think his respect as well for his own supporters because mm-hmm. he talks about the game. You know, the game that happened is, is flashed in front of him mm-hmm. like supporters it does. And he speaks like that. He talks mm-hmm. as if you're a supporter. Listen, we did dig in tonight because we'd, this is a place you've got to come and fight. Mm-hmm. Talked about Dumbarton. It's not the greatest pitch in the world, but you have to come here and try and win. And it's all about winning in cup ties. And that's what supporters are like. Supporters yeah, are mm-hmm. the exact same. And they're like feeding off that vibe, you know, not bullying them. You know, because supporters can see it. They go, they spend their money, they watch the games, yeah. and they want to understand. We all get frustrated when our team's not playing as, at their best. But you've, as a manager, you've, you've got to not try and pull the wool over the, the supporters' eyes because they know. Yeah, they're they, not daft supporters. Exactly. It's like the game against St Mun. He says, ah, wasn't it a great game? Yeah. Pitch, was the, mean, pitch was difficult. One they got day, the ball. Really one day. Yeah, we had to roll our sleeves up. We had to get the ball forward quickly. We had to. Ideally, you want to get the ball down and play nice, attractive football. We, to make the fans happy but sometimes it's not about that it's about going to a difficult place but the surface is all over the place wind blowing everywhere you change your game and that's what that's what he's he's doing at this moment in time Paul you're out in the car are you near Ibrox any sign of Lauren Shanklin any sign of Jeffy <laughs> what about Oscar oh, has he signed <laughs> Break, breaking news, Paul, I've just seen um, Shackle pulling up beside no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> indeed. But that would be you. You'd say that to the, the directors if they're listening. 24 hours to go, you'd like them to sign Lawrence Shankland. Uh, listen, I, I, do you know what? I do feel he could be the key to changing changing the, the destination in the league. But Celtic to play twice. Shankland knows the back of the net. To me, I was talking to a few guys at football the other night and they were talking about instinctive and whatnot, and the, 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 the name McCoy came up. He was just naturally in the box, and no matter where he kicked it, it was in the back of the net. And to me, he's just got that instinctive touch now. 
I don't know what Barry and, and Peter think, but a lot of modern day managers, I suppose, Walter Smith in that bracket as well. Boyd didn't get games against Celtic because, no. in my opinion, they seem to be didn't do much out the box. Miller did more out the box, and hence why Boyd didn't play in the big games. But I, I don't know what you guys think, but I, I just think if Shank was in the right place at the right time, if that was if that if you took Dennis out, put Shankland in there against Joe Hart, in my opinion, the ball would have been in the back of the net. Barry, what would you say on that? The kind of comparison with uh, Chris Boyd, or if Shanklin was there, he is more of a goal taker, natural. Yeah, he's a natural finisher. Yeah, he is. But I, we we've spoke about it before. I think his all round game has improved so much yeah. over the last um, twelve months. But listen, you, you, if you supply him the ammunition, I think he'll put the ball in the back of the net nine times out of ten. Thanks for the call. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go! Looking forward to this weekend. Aberdeen against Celtic, 12.30. In the dugout will be one of the assistants who stays on because Agnew and the manager, Robson, have gone today. Then Rangers in action at three up against bottom club Livingston. Other games, Dundee against Hearts. Hearts surely have nailed on third spot, or have they? Hibs, they need a win up against St Mirren, who'd also love to get points on the road. Motherwell against Kilmarnock, we spoke about earlier. And Ross County, who took a point last night against Livy, against St Johnson. That is a six-pointer there, isn't it, at the other end of the table. And then next Tuesday evening, we've got Motherwell against Ross County and Rangers against Aberdeen. That's quite a double-header for... The guy in charge there just now, you'd imagine they'll have a manager soon, Peter, but you play Celtic, you play Rangers. Yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't, I would be surprised that if they've got someone in place yeah. already, I think they'll have to go and poach someone unless we say it's someone out of work. Like Alex, Alex Neil, Neil, whom you mentioned. You know, yeah. you just go right away, bang, let's, let's get up, let's speak to him, what's, what's he thinking, this is our plans, and then see if Alec buys into it. That's the way I could see it happening, that changing quick, but I think it's Peter Leaven that's staying over just right. now, if I'm correct. Yep. You know, so they listen. These boys get it. Listen, they know the game. They've mm-hmm. been in the game a long time. They know the players, and sometimes that that can help because they maybe see something from the stands when they've been watching when Barry's been coaching that they can maybe say, "Well, maybe try this or try that." And that that's a known quantity of it, you know. And as you say, if he can, <laughs> I think they'll be loath to fight if, if Peter went and won the next two games against Celtic Rangers. I think they'd be loath to give him it up because that's the sort of that's thing right. that happened to Barry. If you know what I mean, Barry done fantastically well. Then we're on a magnificent run and yeah. gets a job full time. I don't think they'll do that again. I think they'll they'll definitely make a decision. They'll they'll go from without the club to get a, a new manager in. Barry, what do you think of headlines this morning? So about Aberdeen, it was under fire. Barry vows to fight on. Sadly, he has gone after the one-one draw. It's not about that last night. It's about recent results. Um, I've got a lot to worry about. That's uh, David Martindale. He admits the Livingston defence must improve. Now I know he'd injury central defenders missing, but last night he was hoping kind of praying for a win against Ross County yeah but listen it's not a defeat that's the way he's got to look at it it's a point on the board um, Ross County have not got any further away from them uh, and they need to now look to build on that um, I was going to say on Saturday but they're, they're coming up yeah, against sure. Rangers at yeah. Ibrox where I, I, I think listen that could be that could be a long afternoon for, for Livingston yeah. but look the most, the most important thing is they stopped to rock, they got a point and they need to look forward and I'm sure he'll be trying to, to bring a few players in course, um, yeah. to strengthen his his team and try and get out of that, mm. that bottom spot. I just saw the highlights, they had some chances as well Barry, but yeah. the plus is they were down twice weren't they, they were behind so yeah. they, they fought back, they haven't given up Peter, that's the thing. No they've not given up but you can't defend the way they defended, no. you know and it doesn't matter who you are. Um, and they do, listen they showed great spirit to get the draw from it because when they go 2-1 down at eight, I think it was 85 minutes right, of them, five, minute, yep. yeah. and all of a sudden yep. you get the equaliser it, it shows you that the players are giving everything for them but if you could stop the game I'm sure they would be looking and saying right you shouldn't be here they've coached all week they've coached it every time they're in there but just when it goes into the games when you're playing with that tension Players make some bizarre decisions and some of the, the, the decisions you've seen the other night there, mm-hmm. like playing in the defender stepping up and there's the times yeah. he's got so much time in the ball down there to play the ball forward. And you're thinking, just go with the runner. Mm-hmm. You know? And the one thing Simon Murray's going to do is make you run. Because yeah. he wants to run in behind you. If, if you're any type of player, so you know you've got to get off your feet quickly. And he didn't do it. 
and they're wee basics that David is to say if he had a henny hair he'd be pulling it out but you, you know you <laughs> yeah, feel sure. for him you know, credit they, to the fans mind you for clubs like Livy and the Dingwall fans coming down the Staggies it's unbelievable isn't it there's no glory there really it's a long time since they had any glory but they were there and uh, the ones that were there last night you do think Barry look at the weather I mean they are they're the lifeblood of the game what about for this weekend Barry you'll be back on Friday will, mm. we, will we grill Peter and what you think yeah, might yeah, happen let's yeah, grill yeah, we'll be <laughs> when he gets grilled <laughs> grilling yeah <laughs> not bad. decent grilling <laughs> he's laughing earlier on he's saying Stephen said yeah but are you a, a, a Motherwell Rangers fan are you a Motherwell Celtic fan <laughs> no you didn't no I mean it's like you, you go and ask Stephen about the game at the weekend and yeah Exactly. Would you think? Oh, come on, all one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, I'm back. You know what I mean? Give me a hard time. It's, not, exactly. it's yeah. hard for me that like, you know. He's got, he's got to feel for us a bit. What about Dundee Hearts, Peter? We go on that one. So Owen Beck, that's good news, isn't it, for Tony Dock? Yeah, great news for him. You know, and he sets up the goal last evening with the delivery mm-hmm. in for Big Ashcroft, who does it very well. And um, so. I'm going for a draw in that game. Right. I think Dundee have done remarkable under mm-hmm. Tony, and people forget he's a lot of experience. Tony, we were talking about Derek. He's a lot of experience. He had a lot of experience with SFA as well. So the players he's bought in have all improved the side. So I'm going for 1-1 in that game. They have been the surprise package. I thought it was going to be a tough season for Dundee. Um, and obviously getting into his first managerial role, but um, they've had some brilliant results. And he's got some good players. And Owen Beck, um, seen him a few times against Celtic and Rangers, and he's certainly impressed. So to get him back, that's a big capture for him. And I think they're going to be pretty safe this year, Dundee. Julie's on, an Aberdeen fan, saying, is there any chance it could be Tony Doherty? Step up. There, there, there you go. Could it be Tony Doherty? He knows the club. I, mean, I didn't even think of that. I mean, we're just obviously speaking about Tony yeah. Doherty, the, the job he's, he's doing at this moment in time. He was up there for a long time with Derek. I mean... There you are. He, he, knows, he, he knows the game inside out. He's clearly a good coach. Mm. He clearly knows how to set a team up and he clearly is very good in the... The transfer market. So, yeah, that could be a could be I'm sure he'd be shout. popular as well because he, he's good. Oh. He's got a good manner with his players and whatever, you know, and he speaks very well about them as well. So, yeah, very good shout. Um, he's done yeah. a, a remarkable job there as well. So, it'll be interesting if they go with, out, as I say, somebody with no connection yeah. to them. I think that could be the only thing. So, that's Dundee Hearts. You reckon a draw? We'll yeah. do it with Barry and Friday. Also, where will Lauren Shanklin be by then? Will he be in the Maroon? Will he I've be seen in the Hearts offer them a, another noon proof. Yeah contract offer than the one they offered him last That's week right. he's got until tonight so l- listen they're obviously keen to get him yeah. get him tied down um, so it'll be an interesting 24 hours for but, Harps which game do you want to throw at Peter now um, I'm going to go with the let's go with the Ross County and St Johnson game. Okay. Peter. Ross County St Johnson <laughs> Ross County's performance last week mm-hmm. I'm going for a 2-1 victory for Ross right. County. Wow. And that would be, they are on 19 points, so they'd go on 22. Um, so St. Johnson on 21 points. What about Motherwell Kelly? You said earlier on 2-1, you reckon? 2-1 yeah. two, two, okay. Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm only listening to Stephen. Eight. You know, he's talking mm-hmm. about that. And I, Derek has always been one that's worked very, very well on his set plays. <clears> big, powerful <throat> strikers. Three big centre-backs, you know, and very good delivery. Mm-hmm. And so, so if you say... I think that's what it could come down to because it could be nip and tuck between the players. There's a good sort of balance between the two teams. I just think set plays could become massive one and I think the quality that Kilmarnock have in that department could maybe win them the game 2-1. Yeah, and the table, Hearts, as we know, in 42 points of third. Kelly, 10 points behind on 32. St Mirren on 29. Dundee, back in the top six on 26. Better goal difference than Hibs on 26. Aberdeen, 24. Then Motherwell, and St Johnson 21, Ross County 19, Livy on 13. Shall we go to Easter Road then? What do you think? Hibs against St Mirren? It's been a good game, maybe? Yeah, I just I just think Hibs will nick it. I think Hibs will go 2-1 Hibs. I just think that they've got that little bit of quality. They, they fought back really well against Kilmarnock and, that, and showed a little bit of spirit for the opposite. They were 2-0 up the last time and then they were 2-0 down this time. So I just think... I, I see what Nick Montgomery's trying to do. Mm-hmm. I think trying to put it in place as quickly has been quite difficult with the personnel and then losing Boyle obviously away as yeah. well. So I, I'm going to go for Hibs, but I'm going to go for Hibs to win this 1-2-1. One, one. I, I know they're missing a few key players, but I was really disappointed in last midweek against Rangers. I was the same against Celtic, I must have been as well. Yeah, I, I know Rangers were really good on the night, scored some good goals, but I expect, I mean, when you go to Easter Road, you think to yourself, this is going to be a mm. toughie. 
Sleeves rolled up, you need to get fired in about it. But watching Hibs, I think they're too wide open. I know that is Martin Boyle is a big miss for them, um, but again, they, they're a club with a big budget. Hibs should be doing better, probably. Peter, what about Rangers against Livy then? Well, I've went Rangers four, Livingston nil. I just yeah. think Rangers have too much quality for them. Um, It'll be a difficult one for Livy. They'll try and make it difficult for you, which Dave's team has always been. Mm. But as you say, because they're open at the back, they've always sort of built on their strength defensively. And that's not been the case for them. And I can't see that change with over the next few days. And I'm just going Rangers 4, Livingston 0. Mm. Surprised with that, Barry? It's, good. it's a good summary. <laughs> but we did I'm yeah, fair. Yeah, listen, yeah. I, as I said, yeah. Paul, I think it's going to be a long afternoon yeah. for Livingston. Mm. And they've probably got to keep any strength for future battles mm. that they've got to think right, we've got to take points in this one. And they took a point last night. And Peter, the 12.30 kick-off... The biggest strength yeah. manager. Yeah, of course he is. He's, but he's our biggest yeah. strength. He you said know, he won't walk away, though. No, but that's no. what I'm saying. He's our biggest yeah. strength. And listen, you don't walk away from your battles. You've yeah. got to stand up, mm. take it on the, the chin as many times you're going to get hit. You've got to take it, and he's done that remarkably well. Aberdeen Celtic, 12.30 kick-off. It's going to be some game. What do you think, Peter? Celtic 2, Aberdeen nil. 2-0, you reckon? Yeah. Okay. I just I just think Celtic have got that quality, yeah. as I say. I know it's not been shown all the time this season. I just think they've got players that are match winners. And as long as you've got match winners on your side, you know, you've all, you'll know, you always win games of football. And that's why I think Celtic have got that little bit of quality. Aberdeen will fight and scratch and bite. But I just think Celtic have too much quality. Can I ask both of you, Barry, Rangers, the next 24, 27 hours, whatever... How many are coming in? Who Who's coming in? I'm not I think the there'll be a couple yeah. of okay. permanent signings, yeah. yeah. Left back, could well be. Yeah, yeah but again, that's depending on Barisic and, yeah. and Ridvan. Mm. Um, I know there's a lot of interest from Turkey, but Ridvan mm. and Barisic also, Croatian international, mm. going into the final six months of his contract. Rangers might look to get a, a couple of pounds in um, for him. So, yeah, I think a left back, if either one of them leave... Um, and then another wide player, maybe. Probably Oscar. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And a striker as well. Yep. I was going you to reckon. say that. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Can you name names? No. I don't. I don't <laughs> think he knows yet. So. No, I, I, sure. I think that is an yeah. area because you, you've you've got Seema going about for a couple of months. Danilo's yeah. still a mm. couple of months away, and Kemar Roof. I don't know exactly the time frame on Kemar Roof, so I think a number nine. If you'd want to go and attack the next three trophies that they're still in, the league, Scottish Cup and Europa League, I think you've got to go with three For sure. centre-forwards yeah. at least. Well, a former Rangers, Hearts and uh, Liverpool star, Danny Wilson's on his way back to Scotland. He's going to Queen's Park, so that is something that's definitely happened during the programme. Peter, what a time for Celtic. Can they win the title again? Who are they going to get in the next 24, 27 hours? It's going to be interesting watching it, Paul. You know, yep. as I say, sometimes it swings and you're talking about players going out and then all of a sudden somebody picks up an injury. Everybody wants to bring in these players. I've said it for weeks now, when the window opened, I would only bring players in that's going to make us better. I think that's so important. But not just even for the supporters in the respect of that. Players on a training pitch notice right away, Paul. So if you don't bring in quality, they look at it as if they say, oh, well, what did we bring him in for? And Barry will tell you, players are unforgiven in that respect. So I think Brendan will be sitting there saying, well, if the ones are not there that we felt was an opportunity, and I told you, I think the domino effect's not happened because of what's happening down south. Yep. You know, but it's it, going to happen, you reckon, the next day? If it yeah. happens, okay. then all of a sudden he's out, he's in, we can move that, and that's the way they shuffle it. That's the only way it will happen, I believe. Thanks so much, guys. Cheers, Paul. Thanks, Thanks to everyone. Thanks, Stephen Reside. Earlier on, we're back tomorrow night at five. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property, offering expert advice on preparing your home for the market. Let's go!